Hi there, welcome to Solving Rational Equations. We're gonna take a closer look at how to solve for unknown values when looking at rational equations. So before we kick off, we have some great keywords. So things like undefined are gonna come back. You're gonna hear the phrase clear the fraction. You're gonna see cross multiplication. And yes, common denominators are still not going away. Please remember at the very top of your notes, do not forget this quick facts section is simply there if you wanna jot down some tips or some quick summaries, anything. When you go back and review your notes, you know what these are about, especially if you find a good trick throughout the lesson. So before we kick off and start solving, I want to focus on a quick example here on the left in the margin, because I want to see if there's something that makes these go a little faster. So here you can see that I'm trying to add these fractions, and now I'm setting it equal. So I'm trying to solve for x. Well, let's look at this denominator. Well, I see they're all out of 3. So really, I'm just focused on this top part because as long as my numerators give me something true, I should get some fractions that are true. So here it's a little straightforward. I just need to go ahead and subtract 5 on both sides. And luckily, x is equal to 5. Now, that's a very simple, straightforward example. And you can see that it's true by plugging in a five here, because five plus five, yes, gives me 10 thirds. So what I like to do where I focus on the numerator once I get the denominators to match, that's what I call clearing the fraction. So my job is to get the denominators to match, and then I can just focus on the numerator. So it kind of clears the fraction out. Here's the good news. When a fraction is equal to a fraction, we have an amazing shortcut called cross multiplication, which basically says that if I multiply these together, you kind of sometimes see it look like that even. But the way that this works is because I can easily multiply both sides by five. So here's how the five and the green kind of works out. And then the other ones, three times this piece, so it almost looks like that. And again, the way that that works is both sides are getting multiplied by that y plus one piece. So you can kind of see why mul cross multiplication works the way that it does. But easy way to do it is just these get multiplied and these get multiplied. It's kind of fraction equals a fraction. So here we're going to go ahead and distribute. So we're going to have 5y minus 20. 5, and then we can also distribute on the other side to give us 3y plus 3. So go ahead and move the 3y's over and subtract on both sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and add 25. So luckily, y is 14. Now, before I get box happy, undefined is still an issue because I could still be dividing by zero. So go ahead and do a quick little solving anything on the denominator, make sure that it never ever goes to zero. So as long as I don't have it equal to negative one, perfect. 14 is not the same as negative one. So yes, that is a solution. You can also take a look at the five. That five is never going to go to zero. So that's not really a restriction. So what I like to do first when I'm looking at all of my different steps is to focus on is it one fraction? And if it is, then I'm going to use that cross multiplication that we just saw. If it's not, then I'm going to need to find a common denominator. And this is when I can use that clear the fraction or I just focus on the numerators. So on example two, well, they look like multiple fractions, so let's focus on common denominators. Here's the good news. These both have n minus 1. That is a common denominator. So now all I'm going to do is add these numerators together to get 3n minus 3 equals 2. And you'll see that I rewrote 2 so it looks a little bit nicer. So I just did over 1. So now I've got fractions. Here's the good news. I've got fraction equals a fraction. So yes, I can do some cross multiplication. And you'll see that the 2 is getting multiplied by that entire n minus 1 piece. All right, well, that's not really going to change, but I can distribute the 2. And then I can go ahead and subtract 2n, and I can go ahead and add 3. Okay, well, it looks like n is equal to 1. And you'll see I've got a little warning, only cross multiply when you're solving. So looks like I'm good to go. Oh, 
here's the tricky part. Did I check for undefined? Because look at this. This is in the denominator. Okay, well, that would be n minus 1 is not allowed to be 0. And if I try to solve that, <gasps> I have n can't be equal to 1. Well, but I solved that it was equal to 1. So this case is a no solution. There is no solution for this one. Because if you try as you might, try to plug in one, you end up dividing by zero. So it's not going to work. So this is a no solution example. And that can happen. So OK, it looks like I've got three different denominators. None of those are the same. So I'm going to have to kind of give a little to every single person. So again, I always try to think of what they're missing. Well, this blue piece is missing the green and the purple. So I need to multiply not only top and bottom by 2, but I also need to multiply it by x plus 2 on top and bottom. OK, what's the second one missing? Well, this one's also missing a 2 on top and bottom. And it's also missing the blue piece, the x minus 1 on top and bottom. And the last purple piece is missing, OK, the blue and the green. So this needs to be an x minus 1 on top and bottom. And then I need to do x plus 2 on top and bottom. And then you can see this second piece. And then you can see this last one. So I always kind of like to rewrite it just so I can really see what's happening. And now I see they all have a common denominator. So you know what that means. Now we can focus on the numerator. So you can always put a box around the numerator if that helps you find it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some distributing. So here's that first part in the numerator. So 2 times 1, well, that's just 2. And then again, kind of that 2 times 1. And then you have equals the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the other side. So it almost looks something kind of like that. And then I'm going to bring everything over to one side because I do see a quadratic. So once you subtract everything to the same side, OK, we're left with something a whole lot nicer. And then try to think about how that's going to factor. Well, what multiplies to negative 4 and adds to negative 1? Well, negative 4 and positive 1 are great choices. And it looks like I'm going to have two possibilities, 4 and negative 1. Now, before we start getting excited and boxing up some of those answers, it's kind of like that last one. Because there's that blue piece that can't go to 0 and the green piece, so x plus 2 cannot go to 0. So I have two possibilities. OK, I got to make sure x is never 1 and x is never negative 2. Well, neither of those numbers are that. So you have two solutions. So with that said, these we are going to start entering some dangerous waters because, yes, Check where it's undefined because your solution may not work. You'll see that I went ahead and highlighted the denominators to see who has what. And I highlighted the 6 because I have a 3, but I can easily turn that 3 into a 6 by multiplying the top and the bottom by 2. So now I have that common denominator. And if it helps, you can always write your common denominator on the side. And then it might be easier to see what's missing. So on that middle piece, I have the 6, but I don't have the x minus 2 piece. So I'm going to give it that on top and bottom. So you see I'm kind of doing that trade Z's again. All right, I have the x minus 2, but I don't have the 6. So I just need to give it a 6 on top and bottom. OK, and then you can go ahead and start to simplify. So I can go ahead and distribute that 2. So you can see that I have my common denominators. And then I can do the same thing on the other side. So that side will just need to be a little bit more careful about. So here's 5x squared minus 10x plus 6. 
And then looks like my denominators match. So I'm gonna focus on the numerators. So here's just my purple pieces. And then subtract and move everything to one side. And then I'm left with something that kind of looks ooh, like that. Now, how is this gonna factor? Just be careful. Make sure you always do first times the last. So five times four it mul multiplies to 20 and adds to negative 12. Well, negative two, and negative 10. And if you do a little bit of grouping and you go ahead and rope your terms together, so what comes out of these two, what gets taken out of these two, you end up with a 5x minus 2 piece and an x minus 2 piece, which means you have two possibilities. We could have x is equal to 2 fifths, or we could have x is equal to 2. So right back to the beginning, Okay, let's check the denominators. Well, I have something that kind of looks like this. So I wanted to show you why the numbers in front really aren't going to affect those restrictions. Because right now, if I divide both sides by six, I just have x minus two left. So as long as x is never two, I'm good to go. Ooh, but this one was equal to two. So that is your extraneous. That is not going to work. So. We only have one solution and it's at two fifths. This one, oh man, looks like factoring might help us because it looks like I have three different pieces. Well, hold your horses. Let's try to factor this piece over there because looks like what would multiply to negative three and add to two. <gasps> and it does factor. And it looks like I have those pieces on the other side. So it does end up being a little bit nicer. So this blue piece, okay, that's missing a minus one. So I just need to give a minus one on top and on bottom. The second piece is missing the blue one, that x plus three. So I'm gonna give that to the top and the bottom. And the four already has both pieces. So now I've got my common denominators. So now just solve for the top. So I've got this orange piece plus this piece equals four. And then we can go ahead and combine. So I've got two X plus two is equal to four. I can go ahead and move that two over and it looks like X is equal to one. So either of these two pieces, we never want them to go to zero. I never want to divide by zero. It's okay, so X can't be negative three and it can't be one. But I just said that X was equal to one no solution so no solution here because if you try to plug one right back in uh oh i end up dividing by zero and i can't do that all right here on number five again it doesn't look like i have common denominators but what multiplies to six and adds to five two and three so it does factor and now i can see all the matching pieces. Well, I can see the three is good to go. Doesn't have any pieces that are missing. So that's really nice. This one was missing the blue piece. So here's where you can see those got multiplied. And this last one is missing the B plus two. So on top and on bottom, everybody gets the common denominators. But once you have that common denominator, you can focus just on the numerator. That's where we clear the fraction. Yes, you'll want to simplify. So the three is going to be fine, but you're going to want to expand this piece. So here's b times b. Three minus one is two. Here's negative three. And then move everything over to one side to make sure it all equals out to zero. And now let's see if that factor. So I have to get to negative 14, somehow add to negative five. And yes, that works out with negative seven and positive two. Two possibilities. What's in the denominator? I've got B plus three and B plus two. So that means I can't have negative three and I can't have negative two. Ooh, okay, so I've got one extraneous, so B is equal to seven is the only option, and I'm gonna label you as extra. It doesn't look like any of these match again, but what multiplies to negative four and adds to three? Well, positive four and negative one. 
Oh, now I can see some matching because here's the plus four piece. This is one minus X. So maybe I could take out a negative. Oh, and there's the blue piece, the X minus one. Here's a really nice shortcut. You've got a negative and a negative here. So let's just turn that into a positive in the purple. Now it's a whole lot easier to see what pieces I have and what's missing. So here's the X minus one on top and on bottom. This already has both pieces, so nothing to worry about. This one needs X plus four though. It's missing that on top and on bottom. And then you kind of see that I keep doing that. Once they all have a common denominator, I just solve whatever's on the top. So I'm just gonna have X minus one on one side and I'm gonna have X plus six, uh-oh. If I try to subtract the X's on both sides, I end up with negative one is equal to six. Well, that's not a true statement. So this one, it's just flat, no solution at all. Everything, I got a false statement, so nothing is gonna work here. Nada, so this is also what a no solution can look like. Again, that one, that doesn't look the same, but they're almost identical. Maybe let's take out a negative, and now those green pieces are gonna match. So what I like to do, instead of keeping this negative on the bottom, is you're gonna see that I just moved it to the top. All right, common denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add those numerators. Well, that's interesting, equals to one. Well, X minus one divided by X minus one, well, those are just gonna cancel out. So it looks like I end up with one is equal to one, well, I'm pretty sure that's a true statement, undefined. What am I dividing by? Oh, X minus one still can't go to zero. So that means X just can't be equal to one. So couple ways, because it looks like no matter what I plug in, I'm gonna end up with something true. So you can say it's all real numbers. X is an element of the real numbers but you do need to include that extra restriction. So if you're choosing set notation, you can say it's all real numbers, but be sure you say it just can't be one because of our restriction. If you prefer interval notation, you can say I've got all possible negative numbers. I'm gonna skip over one and then all possible positives. You can do either one.